And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Riven Victor. I'm gonna go ahead and replay this deck that we played the very first day of the new expansion with a couple of small updates. One of them is we didn't actually play Armed Gearhead the first time, but I actually really like Armed Gearhead. I think this is a card that people are kind of sleeping on as far as Victor decks go and Augment deck goes. You don't always see this card in those Augment decks, but I've been very impressed with it. That quick attack to go along with the Augment is pretty awesome. So this is frequently, you know, a 3-1, 4-1, 5-1, 6-1. You know, like this can grow pretty big, and with it having the quick attack, you can safely attack in and opponents kind of have to just trump block it and just throw blockers in front of it and you can use it as um you know like a, a one a one mana um like an abyss that that they just have to keep on getting you know just throwing a, a unit in front of it every single turn every single one of your attack turns and for a one mana card you can't really ask for anything more it's only just one mana and yes it can you know die to go hard and other you know, removal spells very easily, but it's a one mana card. Like, how much can you really expect from it? But, uh, so I've been very happy with that card. We're going to try that one out. We're going to play a couple of Captain Farron's at the top, and um, I, do, I still really like Trail of Evidence, being able to create the random two-cost card. It costs zero, and then, of course, that is a created card for all of your augment stuff. Um, so, yeah, I like Trail of Evidence. I, I think I like it more than Iterative Improvement and Calculated Creations and those kind of cards. Because uh, it because the thing that, it, even though you don't get to really make, you don't get to choose what you're going to make, but it, it's going to cost zero. And two mana, there's just lots of good cards that you can make with, between Noxus and PNZ with two mana. Um, yeah, there are a couple of bad ones, but tons of good ones. And if you create, like, if you... If you cast like a trail of evidence that hits like calculated creations that or, you know, clump of lumps, like something that creates another card, you can get, you know, like multiple creations in the single card, which is pretty cool. Uh, Rune Weaver, I haven't been super impressed with overall, but I'm going to keep it in here to help reforge for Riven. Plus, reforging is more valuable in this deck with the, your augment cards than your normal deck. So we're going to keep Rune Weaver in here. Um, I'm a little worried about our removal spells. We have Aftershock, Culling Strike, Mystic Shot. All three of those are amazing, but they can't really deal with like a 5-5, five five, for example, or at least not very easily, right? Like they can't deal with larger things. Um, you know, we have something that deals two damage, deal three damage, and then Culling Strike. So large units may be a problem, but we're not going to worry about that too much. We're going to be more aggressive and, and attack and, and all that kind of stuff. So let's give it a try. Let's play some Riven Victor. We could play cards like Thermogenic Beam or Scorched Earth that would allow us to have better removal for very large units. But, you know, thinking it over and looking it over, I just don't think it's really worth it and didn't end up putting anything in. Um, now, this deck, of course, is a deck that can play very large units, so um, immediately punished. <laughs> With Mystic Shot and Aftershock not looking so great. Aftershock, I guess, destroying their landmark could be very important. Um, but we are playing Culling Strike, and Culling Strike's a great removal spell against both Tom Kench and Soraka. So that's going to be the removal spell of choice that we'd like to find. Zonite Urchin will be a good turn one play to dig towards that. Um, I do not have... I do not have any room for next Monday for Meme Tier Monday, but honestly, I have a bunch of Meme Tier decks. I think we're going to be doing two days of Meme Tier decks. And uh, this week, I think we'll have Meme Tier Monday, and then also on Tuesday, we'll have Meme Tier Monday Tuesday edition. So if you have a, if you have a donation deck for Meme Tier, I am still accepting that, and I will put it down. Break the ties that bind. <laughs> I kind of don't really like any of my attacks. I'll pass. Because if I if I just play Aftershock 
on the landmark, then then they have like a free play of Tom Kench. I was I was honestly hoping they'd be scared to block. We don't think this aftershock's gonna work, do we? I would rather kill Soraka than kill the landmark right now. Um But of course there's a bevy of cards they can have that protect Soraka. I'm just gonna kill the landmark. I cause I, I don't want to trade aftershock for you know guiding touch. For example. Master the power of the stars. Master your healing. I'm trying, but they keep wandering off. Stars fall. I need the rubber chick! Take heart. I am superior life form. Okay, big rog. Making a donation deck. I will find the goodness in you, River King. Hope only provides temporary sustenance, child. Well, that's a great card. I rise of you. They had an awesome hand. Alright, donation this deck is gonna be for Garen and Riven. Okay, I'm going to make a Riven Garen deck. Calling Strike could be good. Um, but Pale Cascade, you know, they have ways to stop it. You know, Pale Cascade, Bastion, that kind of stuff. You're welcome, Big Rog. Do you have, do you have a day next week that you would like to, to see? You know, like, do you have any specific day that... Uh, works better for you for that. Come on in. Anything else? <laughs> I kind of want to see if they tap low and allow me to do this by tapping low. Okay, let's do this. on them. Once I stand papers, now faces. <clears throat> yeah, they, it, you know, like, they're, they're being pretty aggressive with this. They must have, like, a bunch of really good protection for this Tom Kench. So not I'm not I'm not thrilled by my prospects of winning this. Their hand was amazing. You know, they had one one drop landmark Soraka turn four. They could have played Tom Kench, but played um you know a couple things and held up protection. And then Tom Kench on turn five with protection. If they have, if they just have Pale Cascade, also, you know, it's just, 
GG's, I guess. Like, you know, like, I, I did all that I could to, to set it up. Okay, good. No Pill Cascade. I was born in battle and raised by war. Good. So I didn't lead with Culling Strike because of... Um... Because of Bastion, right? Like, I wanted to bait a Bastion out of their hand and to make it so, like, only Pill Cascade stopped me. Should have done that first. So Armed Gearhead could be a 2-1 currently. But now I'm, I'm not playing the sword now. If I, if I play the Armed Gearhead, I don't play the sword. Yeah, is that worth it or should I just play the sword? I guess I basically kill them if they don't have Hosh. If I just There's throw everything on, on old Nandroid. Broke my hand, so I got a new one. One hand will not reshape the future. Yeah, I think they have Hush as well. I'm kind of spreading out. So I think I think they have Hush as well. They just passed to me, and they're they're taking they're going to zero. They they must not realize this thing has overwhelm. That's five there, five here. So yeah, they they forgot about that overwhelm, I guess. So there we go. That's the thing about spreading out. You can maybe catch somebody off guard. Yeah, I mean, there's there's the there's the three mana burst spell that just says that um, everybody there's a three mana burst spell that just says all of your team gains challenger until end of round, right? Like that's that's already a spell that's like a you know pretty decent spell, and that's a that's a three mana burst spell, and now you're just giving it a three mana you know, you have to spend unit mana on your landmark, and it takes up one of your spots because it's a landmark, but it's for the the entire rest of the game. You're gonna have, uh, oh man, I guess I guess we're playing these just for the entire rest of the game. You're going to uh, be able to have everything get challenger. That's already good enough. It doesn't need the plus one plus one. Xavier, twelve months. Y'all get some hype in the chat for Xavier with that resub. Alright, as far as the cards that we kept, I kept the Riven because it's a champion. I kept Nandroid to be a blocker for Zoe. And um, then I thought the, the Trail of Evidence could be a cool created card for some of these other things. Alright, I think we gotta play our Elusive. Even though, you know, I like to play Riven, I think we have to play the Elusive. I don't know, like, which one of these to discard for Poro Cannon. We can kind of use the Trail of Evidence and create something and see if we want to play that card or not. If we don't want to play it, then we can discard it to Poro Cannon. And then we can have the... With the two Daring Poros, we can, like, play one and we can discard the other Daring Poro to the Urchin. So, basically, is that... going Jumping through all those hoops would basically mean that the two cost card that we create from Trail of Evidence would be worse than a Daring Poro. And that may not be the case. Maybe the Daring Poro 
you know, maybe that's that card's better than Daring Poro. Maybe we should just discard the Poro Cannon. I would like to play Victor first, though, right before playing this thing. Flesh is a weakness we must shed. What do you know about shedding? You name it, I'll nick it. See, Kempunk pickpocket's good. That's nine overwhelm. These things are huge. Five, three, four, one. So he's a really strong champion. Darkness hides in my past. Whatever first. Don't be calling no enforcers. I'll give you pets. Just borrow it. Ingenious. <laughs> That's a lot of killing strikes. A lot of calling strikes. Anything else? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. The past is a burden we must learn to bear. This is a good game. This is a. This has been. Yeah, this has been a good game so far. I could definitely see this going either way. I'm not sure if we'll be able to stabilize or not. Um, if they have their other champion, Sejuani, I think I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay. No other champion. I think that is good for me. You're kidding me. Should I be trading Riven for Mountain Goat? It must be done. Here, I have a backup Riven in hand. It's a wonderful troll chant. If I play the whip weapon hilt, we'll kill their mountain goat. Takes time. Let's try to keep our Nandroid alive. That was a nice troll chant. a really strong charger. Alright, I'm glad I kept this Nandroid alive. Yes, of course. The color is off. Unfortunately, Victor's champion spell is pretty poor. No materials, no plus two plus zero this round. Fury. That's not a good champion spell. Or no, not, not champion spell, sorry. This is the champion spell, sorry. That's not a good keyword. <laughs> not a good keyword. I may need to use this uh, death ray <clears throat> to kill the charger, which I suppose I could do right now. Do, basically, do I want to draw, you know, MK2? And against their deck, I think I do. So I think I'll go ahead and play that. Yeah, but that's, that's like the main question. Do we want to draw MK2? Oh no. They do have Sejuani. I'm not really sure why they're casting Sejuani on their own turn though. But that that was the card, like I said, that if they had their champion, they were probably going to win.
All right, thank you, Thor. Thanks for the donation deck there. So Aftershock and the Hexcore upgrade are both slow. So I can't do both. I need to do the Aftershock on this 5-3. So that, that really hurts. I really want to cast that Hexcore upgrade. Um, so if I want to trade with Sejuani, I guess I have to play this Blade, blade Fragment. And... There's no real sense in playing the Blade Fragment on the Victor. The Victor is going to die anyway. So this hurts because not only not only are we trading here, but we know that we're drawing. You know, now we know we're drawing the MK. You know, like I am just out of good cards. We know we're drawing the MK card. Uh, this could be MK two. That card's not going to be very good. Uh, we know that's going to be one of the top two cards. Yuck. All right, Poro Cannons looked pretty bad. Yeah, guess so. I couldn't afford them to have a Sejuani, especially right then. Could, if they could have waited a little bit for me to get that, you know, for me to buff up my Victor a little bit more with a couple more keywords, maybe, but... They had, they had the Sejuani for how their their start was so fast with the, you know, all those Overwhelm things, and that one mana 4-1 Overwhelm was great. Um, I couldn't afford them to have like that really fast start with all those Overwhelms and the Sejuani also, but they did. Alright, what are we playing against? Lucian Hecarim. We'll keep Riven, Mulligan the rest... That was kind of an awkward hand, too, with us having just, mod, you know, all three culling strikes against four ones and five three overwhelms, right? Like, that was that was pretty awkward. And then they had that one troll chant was perfect, saving that four one. I have three Aftershock in my deck to be able to destroy Plaza. I obviously don't have an Aftershock right now. Um, I was, you know, I used my Urchin on turn one digging for it. Maybe I should have just discarded Ballistic Bot. And obviously, withdrawing another Ballistic Bot, I wish I would have. Um, honestly, maybe I should have discarded Riven and kept the 4-3 that, that loots. Maybe I should have done that. The Rummages. Yeah, I think Victor works very well. Yeah, I'm happy with... Um, yeah, I'm happy with Victor. Okay, I'm gonna kill this Soul Shepherd. So they're making little one ones. Makes that less powerful. It does go towards leveling up Hecarim. Just like Sejuani last game, Hecarim this game is gonna be like if I could choose one card, I'd rather than have Plaza than Hecarim. Because uh, you know I. I I just at the beginning of the game, right? Because like I could find Aftershock to kill Plaza. I don't have a good removal spell for Hecarim, just like I don't have a good removal spell for Sejuani. That's something with not playing. You know, like we could put stuff in, but right now I am weak to six mana champions. Something I'm currently weak to. Uh, let's see. I was thinking maybe Grizzled Ranger, right? Like, I, I go Sump Treasure, discard this, draw, they go Grizzled Ranger. Yeah, I didn't mean right now go draw Grand Plaza. I meant at the beginning of the game. All right, well, we need to find Aftershock. Let's discard Ribbon. I'm not going to have time to play a second Ribbon. And then I ended up not playing that. <laughs> so I guess I should have discarded the ignition because I ended up not playing it. Um, deciding after after drawing the victor, deciding no, I should keep my spell mana. Yeah, 
Yeah, Riven and Victor have, they just have like some synergy together. Hey, Violet, good afternoon. You don't have good attacks, just pass the turn. You don't need to attack. Alright, they did attack. Alright, please no Hecarim. Please no Hecarim. Play like Lucian or something that I can bolt. No. Why? That's a card I can't beat. No, yeah, Evershade Stalker is good. Yeah, I don't I don't believe that's a meme card. That's a that's a good card. But it's it's obviously made a lot better by the plaza. <laughs> well, sitting back's not gonna help me. Jago and Violet, good afternoon, y'all. That's good. We still have to deal with Lucian level up, but uh, at least, you know, that's not a hacker I'm attacking in and bringing in millions of damage. I need to find another removal spell for Lucian now. That's not going to do it. So they're going to gain the attack token and gain an additional attack. We must learn to bear. But that's only let's see, two, four, five, six, seven. It's only seven damage. To be down to six. I feel like we're doing just fine, honestly, right here. Especially if their plan's just another ever just Evershade Stalker. Uh that makes things a little worse than going up to 13. Hmm. Yeah, that makes things worse, because this I actually have to probably have to block and not take five damage. So yeah, that, that made things worse. But we'll see. I was feeling good about this one, but then, you know, Dark Water Scourge into Rekindler. GG's. I can't attack. Because they just block with Rekindler, it dies, they level up, or, you know, like Lucian gives them the rally, they attack with Hecarim. GG, Rekindler. Alright, and go hard. This is kind of going a, a lot like our uh, Victor deck yesterday, though. You know, like, um, just opponents having, like, what I can't answer. You know, like, we went, you know, I was, uh, 
Oh, no, no, oh, I, I clicked the okay. I meant to click this to, like, you know, see what we're playing against, but oh well. I guess we'll keep the sand. Basically, this is kind of like... Uh, yeah, it's not great. So we had, like, game two, I was like, okay, well, I just, just anything but Sejuani. I can't beat Sejuani. I think they had Sejuani. The very next turn, game three, I said just not Hecarim. The very next turn, they play Hecarim. And then we actually stabilized against the Hecarim. And we were looking okay. But then they had Rekindler for another Hecarim. Alright, got another donation deck. This one from Kordak. Let's get to it. So ordinary. No. I don't think I can just sit back. Yeah, I don't I don't think I can just sit back and take a bunch of damage against the Gohard deck, and even though they can use a Gohard now to kill the ballistic bot. It still, you know, would trade with a go hard, and then it also, art, you know, killed the one drop. So it, it already traded with a card right now. Just these other one health things that. just going to go ahead and discard the portal cannon. I, I'm going to try to trade armored gear head off, not have it just die to, you know, like a go hard. Like I'm going to, I'm going to block if they go to open attacks. And at the time, you know, I didn't have another ballistic bot at the time that was going to be able to be me turning this into a 2-1. All right, another two one to block. Witness perfection, meat bags. We just gonna turn into a burn deck. We could, we could just turn into a burn deck, and that's six damage upstairs. Unfortunately, they just healed their nexus. Okay, we're gonna do that. We're definitely gonna do that. And I don't know. Maybe maybe we we'll just use these as removal spells. Kill two of those things. Take. Oh, I don't want to take four, do I? Wanna arm wrestle? Yeah, Armored Gearhead is easy to kill, and you don't want to block with it. Those two things are both very true. But it's also a one-mana card. Like, it, it doesn't cost very much mana. It's, it's hard to... You know, it's hard to have, like, a, a perfect card that only costs one mana. But it can it can attack ridiculously well and can pressure the opponent. Like, if, the, if you're playing against somebody who isn't playing very much removal, it can just... You know, put in a ton of work for again just a one mana card. Join the glorious evolution. So I'm gonna try, you know, like this isn't the best against like Zap Sprayfin. My line here, but I'm gonna try playing the Victor and then the Ignition. Um and then after the ignition, then then attacking for four with my elusive. Um, but it does give them the opportunity to play an elusive blocker. <laughs> the opponent isn't playing removal, they deserve to lose. Well, I mean, most most people play removal, but not not everybody plays like efficient removal against a one mana, you know, one health thing. You know, maybe they have to spend spend more mana, you know, like three or four mana on a removal spell to kill your one mana card. Feel me in. Who 
says I don't share? Alright, I guess I'm gonna get the attack in right now instead of playing the ignition first to do one more damage because of Gohard. I wish that, like, if you killed your own unit, then they, that then they wouldn't get, like, the other copies of Gohard, right? Like, if I could just Mystic Shot my own unit and keep them from getting the additional copies, that would be pretty cool. No, so that was their very first Gohard. They hadn't played any before that. pretty good yeah it's yeah so they yeah they do fizzle like that in in mtg and some of them do it depends on the wording um like culling strike here would fit like this culling strike is going to fizzle um because it depends on the wording if it only has one target it fizzles but a card like go hard go hard does multiple things it has the target for the drain one and then it also creates the two copies in your deck so it does the multiple things like that so it doesn't um it doesn't really make a ton of sense why it doesn't but i think they count that as another target yeah and so it's it's the word two is important like glimpse beyond that my opponent just played there said uh kill an ally to draw two and so, like, you have to kill your ally to be able to draw the two. And so, therefore, that card... That card, it's, like, a requirement to do that. But Pack Your Bags says, like, drain one and create. And so it says the and, and so it does both because of that and. Good question. Keep up, keep up. Well, we're just drawing great cards, back-to-back -back jury rigs. The worst card in our entire deck. We put Captain Farron's in this deck, didn't we? Yeah, I put two Captain Farron's in this deck. We haven't seen that card in any of these five games. Right? Yeah, we, we've never drawn that card in the five games. Yeah, I guess we drew the other 8-mana card, but the little late doesn't really matter anymore. That one did not go very well. Yeah, the last game didn't look so so good. Um, looked like we needed more top end, I guess. You know, like we we just really ran out of gas there against that Go Hard deck. But Go Hard is the deck that like that's that's what their deck's designed to do. They have tons of card advantage and they can just wear you down. And we saw that happen there. Um, we saw our weakness to the big champions, to the six mana champions, Hecarim. Sejuani, just big overwhelm champions. That that's um, something that I was concerned about going in, and unfortunately, we got paired against those, and my opponents were throwing them down, and drawing them very well. 
Um, no rummages in the deck. You know, I got Zonite Urchin and some Treasure. Um, the only like the only real discard cards are like the Jury Rigs. The Poro Cannons looked pretty bad. They were they are cards that you know like they create Daring Poros, which are like good for our augment cards with being created cards. But then but then again, you're only creating one one elusives that really aren't very valuable. Um, the one one elusives can can give your things elusive with give it all, but um, Poro Cannon did not look like a good card. I I would. I would take Poro Cannon out going forward with this deck. Then keep the jury rigs in there and your created cards. So you, you know you can still have some some rummage with that. But I think that you need you need some more impactful cards. So Poro Cannon could be something that uh, you know you could get a little bit of removal in here for larger things. Maybe some thermogenic beams. Maybe that's that's the uh, nice little change there, um, where you know like if you if you have like some spell mana and you know you kind of save up some mana, your opponent plays a Hecarim or a Sejuani, you can actually have an answer. That'd be pretty nice. So that's that's just one little change I think we'd do, because Poro Cannon didn't, did not trade effectively, was not worth it. Um, besides that, maybe something that can get us a few more cards also. I know we have the two Captain Farons, the one give it all as far as top end right now, but we did see that give, you know, like we didn't see any of these basically the whole time. We saw that give it all at the very end. Um, I like, I do like give it all. I think it's a, a fine one of. Um, I wouldn't mind like a progress day also. You know, get let's get like one progress day in here also to be a nice draw three. That should be able to help us out, especially if we're slowing down games a little bit with that thermogenic beam. Because we want to play, we want to be a little bit more, um, or you know, like we, we can play some longer games. We have some units that want to stay out and play with these augment cards do want to stay out and play. To fit the progress day in there, and the other thing we're going to do is, is I think we're going to just take out the Rune Weavers. Three ones are pretty easy to kill. They don't look that great. I'm, I think let's take out Rune Weaver. Um, maybe we play like one Rune Rune Weaver. It's okay. Basically, I I also I do like Trail of Evidence though. I think Trail of Evidence is pretty good. I kind of want to play some more of those. Um, you know, so I basically think we have like three slots here. You could go. Two Rune Weaver, one Trail, or the other way, one Trail, two Rune Weaver. Again, like like I talked about earlier, I do I do not think you should be playing the the landmark that draws cards in this kind of deck. I do I do not think that that's a, a good card in in this deck. Um, I don't think that that card really works that well with Victor in general because Victor is a again. So basically, this is why because Victor round start you're creating a card that costs one mana. And uh, Ballistic Bot, Round Start, you're creating a card that costs one mana. And you want to be casting those cards. So you're you're you know limiting one mana. If you have two of them play, two mana. If you have three of them play, three mana. You probably don't have three of them play. But usually like one or two mana, you're limiting every single turn if you're playing those things. So therefore your opponent has one or two mana more than you every single turn. And so if you're giving both you and your opponent more cards they're also going to have more mana to spend more cards, and that's going to be a recipe for disaster. So I do not think that you need to uh, spend three mana and a resource to allow both you and your opponent to have more resources um, in the form of cards whenever your mana resource is going to be strained uh, com compared to your opponent. Okay, so we're, we're going to keep on working on Victor. Same kind of thing that was happening yesterday. It was happening again today. Again, you know, like my opponents had good cards that, you know, like that's the thing. Like it's very competitive. And even if your deck's doing pretty good, if your opponent's deck is doing really good, theirs is and theirs wins, then, you know, like that's it. Like it's not like, you know, like you, you're only playing against one deck every single game. And, um, so, you know, like it's it's just comparison to how how does your deck do versus your opponent's deck, and even if your deck even if your deck's doing pretty good and your your deck looks pretty good and, and you're happy with your deck, if your opponent's deck looks amazing and it's doing great and they have exactly what you can't deal with, like you know the Sejuani, the Hecarim, that kind of stuff, um, you know if they have like you know exactly stuff that you can't deal with, then you know you lose and it's just it's just a you know it's a, it's a you win. Or you lose. It's not, uh, hey, we did pretty good. We we almost won. Or, you know, like our deck looked pretty good, but my opponent had all this awesome stuff. You know, it's win or lose. Like, that's it. Today, a lot of loss, just like yesterday. Same kind of thing. It It's not necessarily the victor is not good and that you can't play victor. It's just 
you know, these small samples of yesterday today, we got a lot of losses with Victor. Um, but we're going to keep on working on it and uh, yeah, keep finding that right combination because that's that's the other thing. Whenever you're playing, when you're playing a deck that has a lot of answers, you got to find your right answers, right? Like we had all those cooling strikes in hand against the deck that played one mana 4-1 Overwhelm, three mana 5-3 Overwhelm, and just went super Overwhelm heavy with four ones and five threes while we're staring at three cooling strikes in hand. That's, that's you know... That doesn't look like a, a you know good answer to four one and five three overwhelms, so we got we got to work on that. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Riven Victor. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course leave those comments. Um, I always love seeing those. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.